great to be with you again here at Hope. I am uh, Pastor Tim Prince, and uh, I'm from East Troy. And uh, many of you have uh, seen before, this is uh, now uh, several years uh, that we've uh, done this round robin with the pastors, so glad to be with you. I also fill in from, for Pastor Oswald time to time on uh, Saturday morning uh, services, so you might uh, see me extra times during the year then, too. And we are continuing our theme of loving people on the margins of society. And tonight we're going to talk about widows and orphans and why they're especially important to, to the Lord in the Bible and uh, why, why God especially wants us to show care for those who have lost caregivers. Now that, that's kind of our uh, theme for this evening. Let's uh, begin now with our opening hymn from the hymnal 752, Be Still My Soul.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God will assign to all generations. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you create us and still take care of us. Open our eyes to the needs of others, so that by our hands they may feel your touch. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear now the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Our first scripture reading is from the book of the Exodus, the 22nd chapter. Moses repeated the words of the Lord. You shall not mistreat any widow or fatherless child. If you do mistreat them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry, and my wrath will burn, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall become widows, and your children fatherless. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We hear our second reading from the book of Deuteronomy, the 14th chapter. Again, Moses repeated the words of the Lord. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God, and the Lord has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. At the end of every three years, you shall bring out of all the tithe of your produce in the same year and lay it up within your towns. And the Levite, because he has no portion or inheritance with you, and the sojourner, the fatherless and the widow who are within your towns shall come and eat and be filled that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands that you do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And our third reading is from the epistle of St. James, the brother of our Lord to the Christian church, the first chapter. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now sing uh, stanzas one, three, and four of uh, hymn 797. Praise the Almighty. One, three, and four.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Tonight we learn about how we should care for widows and orphans. After all, we are one family under one Father in heaven, and we have a new family, the family of Christ, where we're brothers and sisters, where everybody here is my mother, my sister, and, or, all the women, I should say. Uh, the men, every, every man here is my father, my brother, my son. And this is how Jesus teaches us to think. But the question for us tonight is, whose job is it to care for those who have lost caregivers? What about the person who has lost their spouse? We could talk about widows because in Bible times they were especially helpless when they lost their husband. They couldn't just go get a job. They couldn't have status in society like everyone else. Orphans are a little bit uh, easier for us to understand, too. Even in our society today, a child's parents uh, die. Who takes care of the children now? You know, do they become, do they go to family? Do they become wards of the government or what? And so we are to care. God calls us to be his hands and feet and to care for those who have lost caregivers. But to understand the perspective, let me tell you a little story. Uh, this comes from a, a brother pastor, uh, a pastor who was a uh, pastor at one of the congregations I served in Nebraska uh, before me. But when he retired, he uh, worked for Orphan Grain Train. Everybody, uh, anybody here at Orphan Grain Train before? We have a branch here in uh, Wisconsin. Orphan Grain Train is a recognized service organization of the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod. And it's basically a providing aid, uh, uh, not only here in the United States, like whenever we have a flood or natural disaster happen, tornado in a town or whatever, Orphan Grain Train has semi-trucks ready to go to take bottles of water, medical supplies, whatever, uh, but also, Orphan Grain Train all throughout the world ships clothing, medical supplies, all these kind of things. Now this isn't a commercial for Orphan Grain Train, but I'm getting to the story about Pastor Real, John Real. Uh, he, he tells the story, he, what he did for Orphan Grain Train is he would go over and there are lots of orphanages in Russia that we support. And he would go around and visit uh, these uh, orphanages in Russia. You see in Russia, the government doesn't really subsidize these orphanages. The government really doesn't take care of its people, Pastor Real explained. If these orphans are to be cared for and if the staff is to receive compensation or whatever, it's kind of up to, well, the Christians have kind of taken it on. But ever since the time of Christ, it was Christians who are caring for the people on the margins because that's what Jesus calls us to do. So Pastor Real is going around visiting these orphans and it happened to be at uh, a little before Christmas time. He was there in December at an orphanage in Russia, uh, one of the ones that we sponsor. And, uh, and he was uh, teaching the kids. He goes there and reads them Bible stories and holds up the uh, picture so that the little kids can see. And, and uh, he would speak with a uh, translator because the kids are all speaking Russian. That, that's all they know is Russian. And he was uh, passing out little coloring pages for the kids after the Bible story time. And they were all working on their coloring pages. You know, the uh, Christmas story. So Mary and Joseph and, and the baby in the manger, the stable, uh, you know, a few cows, whatever. You can kind of picture the coloring page already, can't you? You've, you've seen a hundred pages like that. Well, anyway, so the kids are coloring their coloring pages. And Pastor Ariel is walking around looking at how the kids are doing. And... And he comes up to one little boy, and he notices his picture is a little bit different than all the other kids. A little boy named Misha, by the way. And he asks, he talks, again, talking through the translator, but he asks Misha, Hey, what, what's going on in your picture? How come I see two babies, two children in the manger, and not just one? And Misha he launches into this story like he's got it all figured out in his head. Why are there two children in the manger in his picture? Well, he says, I, I come to the manger and I don't have, 
a gift to bring like everyone else. I, I'm an orphan. I, I have nobody. I have nothing. And I don't have gold or frankincense, all these things. I, I don't have, you know, not even like a shepherd to bring a sheep or anything like that. I have no gift to bring. So I say to the baby Jesus, I say, I have no gift to bring. And, and the baby Jesus says, that, that's okay, I'm glad that you're here. And little Misha says, I know what gift I could give you, Jesus. If I climb into the manger with you and help keep you warm, would that be an okay gift? And baby Jesus replies and says, if you climb into the manger with me and keep me warm, that would be the best gift anybody could ever give me. And so that's why little Misha had two uh, children in the manger in his picture. And that story really stuck with me because here is a little orphan and he gets it. He understands more than, wow, sometimes I grew up my entire life learning about Jesus and still it's like a little child can say something that you just like, I never thought of it that way before. That when you think of the two children in the manger, baby Jesus, little orphan Misha, the question is, who's taking care of whom there? Who's the, who needs, uh, who needs uh, to be in that manger more? And of course, little Misha, he was like, I just want to belong to Jesus and be with him. I just, I, maybe in that way, I could be adopted into this family too. And a little orphan who understands that because orphans, they just want a family. That's all they can think about. That They want to be loved and they know that they need that. And Jesus, that's why he came to, to say to anybody, everyone, I just need to be loved and I just need to be cared for. Jesus says, that's why I've come. Come be with me. We also learn lessons from the Bible, lots of stories about widows. And of course, like I said, in our day and age, we might apply that to widowers too. It is somebody who's lost a spouse, somebody that the thing is, God gave you this person to help care for you. And now when you've lost a spouse, you feel like I'm on my own. Who's gonna help care for me now? And we say, oh, you're an adult, you can take care of yourself. But everybody, like I said, just like the little uh, orphan, everybody needs to be loved and cared for. And sometimes you have family nearby, sometimes you're all by yourself. And we have the Lord, but sometimes it feels like I'm still lonely. I've got the Lord with me, but I need somebody. Stories in the Bible. We could think of the prophet Elijah during the big drought. Three and a half years it didn't rain in the land of Israel. And uh, God sent, sent uh, the prophet Elijah and says, go out of, go to this, this town on the edges, on the margins, and there I've commanded a widow to help care for you. And you remember the story, the prophet Elijah comes and he meets this widow and, and he meets her at a well. Kind of interesting, there are a lot of stories in the Bible where a man is coming to a well and meeting a woman. But he asks, hey, will you give me a drink? And while you're at it, how about a little bit of bread? Now remember, it's been a long time uh, there's been drought and famine. Nobody's got bread, nobody's got food, everybody's hungry. And this, this widow says, I'd give you some bread, except the thing is, I'm here at this well to draw some water, and I'm going to take it home. I'm going to bake a little biscuit for myself and my son to split, but that's literally all the flour I've got left is just for one little biscuit, and we're going to eat it, and then we're going to end up dying. And Elijah says, you trust me. God has sent me here. And God is going to take care of me. God is going to take care of you. God is going to take care of us. And so the widow, amazingly, she believes the Lord's words. 
as the Bible said, the Lord had commanded her to help take care of Elijah. But it's sort of like that little orphan climbing into the manger with Jesus. You say, the prophet comes to this widow's house. God says, I commanded her to help take care of you, Elijah. But really, who's taking care of whom here? Is Elijah caring for the widow? Because it says, as long as Elijah was there, the flour didn't run out and the pot of the, the jar of oil didn't run out. Wow, amazing. Well, it wasn't Elijah that did the miracle, was it? It was God who did the miracle and God is taking care of each one of us. Now, whose job is it to take care of the orphan? The government's job? Well, that's Part of Elijah's story is he's on the run from the king and the queen. The government had failed all the people because, well, they led the people into stray, astray, believing, hey, if you pray to the Baal, the rain god, he'll send uh, you prosperity in life. But Baal wasn't answering. There was a big drought. There was a big famine. Who's taking care of people when they are in need? Now, we also have another widow story in the Bible, and that is, well, there are lots of widow stories, but I'm going to jump to the New Testament now. Jesus, he now, presumably, his own father has passed away. He's helping taking care of his mo mother, Mary, right? She is a widow. But he comes into a town called Nain, and there's a widow there who lost her only son. Now, the thing is, like I said earlier, if somebody loses a spouse, you say, well, their family will help take care of them. What about the woman? She's lost her husband. Now she's lost her, her son, her only son, who would have helped take care of his mother. Then what? What is she supposed to do? Well, maybe she has some, a sister, a brother. Maybe she has some other relatives in the town. Who knows? But the fact is, Jesus comes and he sees the funeral procession going by and he knows this woman has lost everything. God has taken away those that she loves. God has taken away her caregivers. And Jesus understands that. Now I know that's kind of tricky because you say, wait, Jesus, you are God. What do you mean God has taken away her caregivers? Well, God, Jesus has come down. He is one of us, right? Jesus himself needs to be cared for. He was that baby in the manger that needed a mother and a father to care for him. And eventually Jesus lost his father too. But Jesus had pity on this woman. She lost her husband, now her son. He touches the coffin or whatever it was and he raises her son from the, from the dead. Why? to show that he cares for this person who has lost everything else. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And in this case, the Lord had taken away, but the Lord gives again too. What's the lesson in all of this? Well, we hear Moses' words, and I think it's almost kind of funny. I don't know whether to laugh or cry when I read that uh, reading from Exodus 22, where God says, Make sure you take care of the widows and the orphans because if you don't, I'm going to kill you and your, your spouse, is, your wife is going to be uh, husbandless and your, your child is going to be fatherless, right? I'm going to make your own wife a, a widow if you don't care for the widows in your town. And like I said, I don't know whether to laugh or cry at that, uh, but the point is God is saying, hey, this is how important it is to me to take care of all those who are in need of care, whom I have taken caregivers away, but I also give caregivers. I'm also sending you, my people. You're going to care for those on the margins. Why? Because I do. Whose job is it to care for them? Well, she's not my wife. She's not my mother. No, you can't say that. Well, those children, how sad that they lost their parents, but they're not my children. They are now, the Lord says. You treat these people as if they're your own people. 
Because I love them, you will love them. And so Moses also commands, repeating God's commands, of course, in uh, our Deuteronomy reading, when you bring your offerings to the Lord, this is how you're going to care for those who need care. This is how you're going to care for those on the margins. You bring your offerings to the Lord, but those are really going to help the Levite, that is, the church workers, the sojourner, the guests uh, among us, the fatherless, the widow. So again, the fatherless means orphan, the widow, those who otherwise might not have caregivers. But now we are the caregivers. And the Lord says, I'm sending you. You're going to be my hands. You're going to be my feet. And when you do it for even the least of these, even the people on the margins, you're doing it for me. And when we get to heaven, we're going to say, Lord, when did we see you a widower? When did we see you an orphan? When did we see you hungry and feed you? When did we see you thirsty and give you a drink? Or in prison and visit you? And all these kind of things. Because we're just going to do it because we share the love of the Lord. God has taken care of us. God has given us brothers and sisters in Christ, even if he's taken away everything from you. As we say in the, as we pray in the Psalm 27, as I recall, even though father and mother may forsake me, God will never forsake me. God will receive me. Even if I lose all those near and dear to me in life, I know that God will take care of me. But the Lord says, but I care for you and I want you to spread my love and care to others. So it's not just a do this or I'm going to kill you kind of thing, as God says. It's I love you and I love those people over there too. Won't you share the love? Can we all be loving together? Can we all be one family? That's really what God wants. And so we do joyfully, spontaneously. That's why when we get to heaven, we're going to say, Lord, we don't remember doing these things because we're simply sharing the love that God gives to us. So that's the attitude that we have toward all those on the margins. It doesn't matter who you are. You're somebody that Jesus died on the cross for. And I needed Jesus to die on the cross for me. I need God to take care of me. And so I'm going to share that care with you too. Isn't that the kind of attitude we ought to have with everybody, with all of our brothers and sisters in Christ and everybody we meet? Of course it is. Amen. And now may God's peace, which goes beyond all that we can understand, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now let us rise. Oh, uh, I was going to say... Um, the offering, uh, you'll find the offering plates uh, by the door as you go out tonight. So even though George prepared a 10-page uh, piece by Bach, uh, practice for an hour on it. Uh, sorry, George, you got to play it on Sunday. So, <laughs> so okay, uh, uh, let us rise uh, to pray together our family prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And now we close with uh, hymn 781, We Give Thee But Thine Own. Right, see you.
think, uh, as I recall, I think we'll be uh, with you again in three weeks uh, on Wednesday. So hope to see you all again uh, soon. And God's blessings uh, throughout your Lenten season. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.